So I was actually quoting you. I was uh, on a social network last night uh, in a Clubhouse. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard of it. I was wait. Uh, I have to. I have to ask you about this uh, because I've, I was invi- I'm invited to do a Clubhouse. I don't know what that means. A, t- a tech <laughs> reporter has invited me to do a Clubhouse about my new book. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, well, let me know when because I'll show up if what, you have. But well, what is it? Okay. So first of all, let me just mention that I okay. was in a Clubhouse. Uh, room last night and I kept plugging your exactly what exactly what you said about uh, passion. So we'll talk about it. it. It was a room that was focused on burnout. Okay. Uh, but first Clubhouse is a kind of fascinating place in terms of like, your mind would be very interesting to analyze this place because, you know, we, we talk about email, we talk about social networks, but Clubhouse is something very different. And I've encountered it in other places, Discord and so on that's voice only communication. Okay. So it's a bunch of people in a room, they're just you know, eyes closed. All you hear is their voices. The real time. Real time, yeah. live. It only happens live. You're technically not allowed to record, but some people still do. And you know, especially when it's big, big conversations. But the whole point is it's they're live. And there's different structures. Like on Discord, it was so fascinating. I have this Discord server that would have hundreds of people in a room together. Right, we're all just little icons that can mute and unmute our mics. Okay, and so you're sitting there, not so it's it's just voices, and you're able with hundreds of people to not interrupt each other. First of all, like huh. as a dynamic system, yeah. Like you see icons, just like mics muted or not muted, basically. Yeah. Well, so everyone's yeah. muted, yeah. and they unmute and they start. It starts flashing. Yeah. And oh, so you're like, okay, let me uh, get precedence. Yeah. So it's it's the digital equivalent of when you're in a conversation at like a faculty meeting and you sort of uh, like kind of make some noises like yeah. while the other person's finishing and it, so people realize like okay this person wants to talk next but now it's purely digital you see a flashing. But in a yeah. faculty meeting, which is very interesting, like even as we're talking now, there's a visual element that seems to increase the probability of interruption. Yeah. When it's just darkness, you actually listen better. And you oh, don't interrupt. So, like, if you create a culture, there's there's always going to be assholes, yeah. but they're they're actually exceptions. Everybody adjusts. They kind of evolve to the the beat of the room. Okay, that's one fascinating aspect. It's like, okay, that's weird because it's different than like a Zoom call where there's video. Yeah, uh, it's just audio. You think video adds, but it actually seems like it subtracts. The second aspect of it that's fascinating is when it's no video, just audio, there's an intimacy. It's feel it's weird. Because with strangers, it you you connect in a in a much more real way. It's very it's similar to podcasts. Yeah. But with imagine, a lot of people. With a lot of people yeah. and new people. Huh. And then you and, and they they bring okay, first of all, different voices like low voices and like high voices and and it's, it's it's more difficult to judge. In Discord, you couldn't even see uh, the people. It, it was a culture where you do funny profile pictures as opposed to your actual face. Yeah. In Clubhouse, it's your actual face. So you can tell like as an older person, younger person. In Discord, you couldn't. You just have to judge based on the voice. But there's, a, there's something about the listening and the intimacy of being surprised by different strangers that feels almost like... Um, a party with friends and friends of friends you haven't met yet, but you really like. Now Clubhouse also has an interesting innovation where there's a large crowd that just listens and there's a stage and you can bring people up onto stage. So See. only people on stage are talking and you can have like five, six, seven, eight, sometimes 20, 30 people on stage. And yeah. then you can also have thousands of people just listening. I see. So. There's a, I don't know, huh. a lot of people are being surprised by this. Why not, is it called a social network? It seems like it doesn't know. have, there's not social links, there's not a, a, a feed that's trying to harvest attention. It feels like a communication. Uh, so the, the social uh, network aspect is you follow people. Yeah. And the people you follow, now this is like the first social network that's actually correct use of follow, I think. Y- you're more likely to see the rooms they're in. So there's a, your feed is a bunch of rooms that are going on right now. Okay. And the people you follow are th- the ones that will increase the likelihood that you'll see the room they're in. And so the final result is like, there's a list of really interesting rooms. Like um, I have all these, I've been speaking Russian 
quite a bit there's practicing, uh, but also just like talking politics and philosophy in Russian. I've never done that before, but it allows me to connect with that community. Oh. And then uh, there's a community of people, like, it's, it's funny, but like I'll go in a community of all African-American people talking about race and I'll be welcomed. Yeah. I've never had, like I've yeah. literally never been in a difficult conversation about race, like with people from all over the place. It's like fascinating. And then I, musicians, jazz musicians. I don't know, you could say that a lot of other places could have created that culture. I suppose uh, Twitter and Facebook allow for that culture, but there's something about this network as it stands now, because no Android users. <laughs> It's probably just because it's iPhone people. Yeah. Uh, it's there, it's less like, conspiratorial or something. <laughs> well, like less, listen, I'm an Android person. So I, I got an iPhone just for this network, yeah. which is funny. Yeah. Uh, is it, For now, it's all like, there's very few trolls. Yeah. There's very few people that are trying to manipulate the system and so on. So I don't know, it's, it's interesting. Now the downside, the reason you're going to hate it is because it's so intimate, because it pulls you in, and pulls in very successful people like yeah. you, just every like really successful, productive, very busy people. Uh, it it it's a huge time sink. It's very difficult to pull yourself out. Interesting. You mean once you're in a room? Well, no. The, uh, leaving the room is actually easy. The beautiful thing about a stage with multiple people, there's actually a literal button that says "leave quietly." Okay. So culture, uh, no etiquette wise, it's okay to just leave. So you and I in a room, when it's just you and I, it's a little awkward to leave. If you're asking questions, I'm just yeah, gone. <laughs> yeah, but, and actually if you're being interviewed for the book, that's weird because you're now in the event course, and yeah. you're supposed to, but usually the person interviewing would be like, okay, it's time for you to go. It's more normal. But the the normal way to use the room, it's like, you're just opening the app and there'll be like, I don't know, Sam Harris, uh, Eric, Weinstein, um, I think Joe Rogan showed up to the app, Bill Gates, I mean, just these people on stage just like randomly just plugged in and then you'll step up on stage, listen, maybe you won't contribute at all. Maybe you'll say something funny yeah. and then you'll just leave. Yeah. And there's uh, the, the addicting aspect to it. The reason it's a time sink is you don't wanna leave. What I've noticed about exceptionally busy people Yeah. That they love this. This the there. I think might have to do with the pandemic. It might be a little a, bit. Yeah. There's a loneliness. Yeah, they're we're all starved. Yeah. But also, it's really cool people. Yeah. Like when was when was the last time you talked to Sam Harris or whoever? Like think of anybody. Uh, Tyler Co Like any any, yeah. any faculty. This is like what universities strive to create, but it's taken. Because you don't years have to of cultural evolution to try to get a lot of interesting smart people together that run into each other. Well, yeah. well you have really strong faculty in a room together with yeah. no scheduling. This is the power of it. Yeah. It's like, you just show up, there's no none of that baggage of scheduling and so on, and there's no pressure to leave. Uh, sorry, no pressure to stay. It's very easy for you to leave. You realize that there's a lot of constraints on meetings and like faculty, there's the, uh, like even stopping by, you know, before the pandemic, a friend or faculty or colleague and so on, you know, there's a weirdness about leaving. Yeah. Uh, but here, there's not a weirdness about leaving. So they've discovered something interesting. The but the final result, when you observe it, is uh, it's very fulfilling. I think it's very beneficial, but it's very addicting. So you have to make sure you moderate. Yeah, that's interesting. And okay, well, so maybe I'll try it. I mean, look, there's no the things that make me suspicious about other platforms aren't here. So the feed is not full of user-generated content that is going through some sort of algorithmic rating process with all the weird incentives and nudging that does. Uh, and you're you're not producing content that's being harvested to be monetized by another company. I mean, it, it, it seems like it's more uh, ephemeral, right? You're, you're here, you're talking. The feed is just actually just showing you, here's interesting things happening, right? You're not jockeying in the feed for, look, I'm being clever or something and I'm going to get a light count that goes up and that's going to influence and right. and there's more friction. There's more cognitive friction, I guess, involved in listening to smart people versus uh, scrolling through. Yeah, there's something there. So there's no... Why are people so... I, I see a lot of... I have a, there's all these articles that seem... I haven't really read them, negative. but seemed, why, are, why are reporters negative about this? Competition. The New York Times wrote this article called Unfettered Conversations Happening on Clubhouse yeah. is... Uh, so I'm right in picking up a tone from even from the headlines that there's some like negative 
vibes from the press. No, this. so I can say, let's say, well, I'll tell you what the article was saying, which is uh, they're having cancelable conversations, like yeah. the biggest people in the world almost trolling the press. Right. And the press is desperate. Like 4chaning the press. Yeah, like 4 yeah. the press. <laughs> but by saying that you just, you guys are looking oh, for clickbait from our genuine human conversations. And so, so the I think the, honestly, the press is just like, what do we do with this? We can't, yeah. um, first of all, it's a lot of work for that. Okay. Uh, it's what Naval says, which is like, this is skipping the journalist. Like the interview you, uh, if you go on Clubhouse, the interview you might do for the book will be with somebody who's like a journalist and interviewing you. Yeah. That that's more a uh, traditional. Yeah, it'd be a good introduction for you to try it. But the like the way to use Clubhouse is you just show up, and it's like again, like me. I'm sorry, I'm like blame. I'm, <laughs> I can't. I keep mentioning Sam Harris as if it's like the only person I know. But like a lot of these uh, major faculty, I don't know Max Tegmark, like yeah. just just yeah. major faculty, just sitting there, and then you show up, and then. Uh, I'll ask like, oh, don't you have a book coming out or something? And then you'll talk about the book and then you'll leave five minutes later because you have to go get coffee and go to the Interesting. bathroom. Okay. So like, that's the, yeah. it's not the journalistic, you're not gonna actually enjoy the, the interview as much because it'll be like the normal thing. Yeah. Like you're there for 40 minutes or an hour and there'll be questions from the audience. Right. Like I'm doing an event next week for the book launch where it's like Jason Fried and I are talking about email, yeah. but it's using some more, There'll be like a thousand people who are there to watch virtually, but it's using some sort of traditional webinar. Clubhouse would be a situation where that could just happen informally. Like I jump in, like Jason's there, and then yep. someone else jumps in, yep. and and yeah, that's interesting. But for now, it's still closed. Yep. So even though there's a lot of excitement, and there'll be quite famous people just sitting there listening to you. Yeah. But the numbers aren't exactly high. So you're talking about rooms, like even the huge rooms are like just a few thousand. Right. And this is this is probably like Soho in the 50s or something too, just because of the exponential growth. Give it seven more months. And if you let one invite begets two invites, begets four invites, begin pretty explode. soon it'll be everyone. And then the rooms in your feed are going to be whatever, uh, marketing, performance, enhancing drugs or something like that. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. But then, and, and a bunch of competitors, there's already like 30 plus competitors yeah. sprung up, Twitter spaces. So Twitter yeah. is creating a competitor yeah. that's going to likely destroy Clubhouse yeah. because they just have a much larger user base and, and they already have a social network. So yeah, I, I, right. I, I, I would be very cautious, of course, yeah. with the addictive element, but it doesn't, just like you said, this particular implementation in its early stages doesn't have the like, yeah. the, uh, well, it doesn't have the context switching problem. Yeah, you'll you'll just switch to it, and you you'll be a, stuck. Yeah, to keep a context is great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and but then I think the best way I've found to use it is uh, to acknowledge that these things pull you in. Yeah. So I've used it in the past, uh, like almost you know I'll go get a coffee and I'll tune into a conversation. As if the, that's how I use podcasts sometimes. I'll just like play a little bit of a podcast uh, and then, you know, I can just turn it off. The problem with these is it pulls you in. It's really interesting. And then the other problem that you'll experience is like somebody will recognize you yeah. and then they'll be like, oh, Lex, come on up. Uh, come on. <laughs> oh, hey, I had a question for you. And then it takes a lot for you to go like to, to ignore that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And then you pulled in and it's fascinating and it's really cool people. So it's like a source yeah. of a lot of joy, but it uh, is, you have to be very, very, very careful. 